this is Marcus G. No, it's not Marcus G. Hello, this is Marcus Giuliano from <laughs> MarcusG.tv. I'm a chef on a mission. I'm here with Kevin Burns. From TheFormingHead.com, New York's Beer Authority. Yes, you are on the beer mission. Beer I'm mission. on the beer mission to you. With, I'm on the beer mission with you You're right with now. Me. I'm with you. I'm on the health mission. I'm on the wine mission. I'm on missions. the real food mission. Real food, real beer, real wine, real experience in a restaurant. Today we have Dogfish Head, or as we say here, Dogfish. Um, the Miles Davis Bitches Brew. Uh, ale brewed with honey and what is that? Geisha root. Geisha root. Now, this is a beer that I believe is a one time release that Sam and Dogfish brewed to celebrate the 40th anniversary of this album from Miles Davis. Uh, a stout, I think 9%. Now, can you tell some people, I have a feeling a lot of beer drinkers don't know what Geisha root is. You're putting me on the spot. Aren't you? Yeah. Can I look at the internet? Yeah. Right, well, you look at the internet, poor. So, we have a Dogfish Head beer dinner coming up here at Aroma Time Bistro. So, what we do is some of the beers that we've never had, we're going to taste. We're going to try and play around with some food pairings. Very, very hot topic. Um, the World Craft Beer. Pairing good beer with good food, like you talked about. So, it's an African herb. It's an okay. African herb. Since Africa doesn't have hops, I guess they use this. Okay. Instead of hops. They're using the root here? I believe so. That's what I read. The label just says geisha. Now I believe I read it was the root with geisha root. Okay. Now this is a one-time release. If you can find it, buy it. I Jeez. already know that. And if you can find multiple ones, they actually recommend laying this down. Now mostly their beers can lay down, but yes. they don't always recommend it. This actually says on the label it'll be fine yeah. to lay down. What's the percentage? It's up there. It's 9%. It's probably up there. Mm, kind of a... This really is... You can smell the honey. Dark brown, can, blackish color, you know, tan head. You know, I... Yeah, this is... That, and the, dogfish has those up... They always have beers that are up front. Big you know, flavors, unique big, flavors. Yes. Things that nobody else puts in beer. Um, or things that people were putting in beer a thousand years ago they're putting in like beer Nobody today. today is putting in beer. Right. Now, I don't get the honey right up front. I get a weird... Mix I get of a mix of coffee and coffee, really some maltness going on. Yeah, like a bitterness, like maybe not even coffee, maybe espresso. That's good. That's real good. It's extremely, incredibly smooth and silky for a stout. Smooth, silky. There's no bitterness to it. It's very, very get a rounded. little bitterness on the back end. I think it's going to come alive more as the beer warms. Or as the beer ages. As the beer ages. Um, silky, silky smooth. A um, little prolonged body. Dryness on the back end. I'm not getting the honey. Maybe that's contributing to the smoothness. To the smoothness. Um, Absolutely contributing to the smoothness. And taking away from the because dark it, roasted it has, it has a, you can almost It has like almost like a meatish nose. Meatish is, meat is honey wine. It almost has like a meatish nose. You want to smell, Jamie? Now, the one thing I do taste, that you'll taste with a lot of sweet stouts or milk stouts, mm -hmm. is I taste that residual sugar, almost not even on much on the palate, but on the, on the teeth. You know, you get, when you drink a milk stout or sweet stout, you'll get that residual sugar um, that's left from brewing a beer that style. Okay. And I, I get a little bit of that here. How does it smell, Jamie? I get some cinnamon in there and clove, some coffee. Chocolate, definitely chocolate. Definitely chocolate, the coffee. Deep, and it smells, because I can't taste it, it smells really rich and yes, uh, almost milky is. as well. It is very rich. It is rich. Now, I don't know if they pigeonhole this into a style. With the way the brewers are brewing today, it's tough to pigeonhole certain beers. And I don't know if he did this. I think I asked somebody to describe it. They said a stout is the closest thing. I would say it's that milk stout, sweet stout, smooth um, like Keegan Ales, right down the road in Kingston, that, that mother's milk. Which I was there today. It doesn't have that as much of that dry roasty. It has that cream I was middle. at Keegan today. I stopped in. I saw Tommy Keegan. He wasn't open. The brewer wasn't open, so I went in the back door. Of course, he was up at the bar carrying on business. And I got bottle number 12 of 27. Only Tommy 27 hooked me bottles. up. Mother's milk aged in rye Whiskey barrels. From These are rye whiskey barrels from Tuttle, Tuttle Town, Town, right yes. down the street. I'm excited. Not to take the thunder away from here, but you mentioned Keegan Ales, and I had to show this off. Tommy hooked me up. You can't buy these. You can't. He offered to pop one open. 
and it was it was warm. And uh, I said, I'll buy one from you. And he hooked me up with a bottle. There you go. And he really did. I was I saw it in Hudson Valley Edible, so I was going in there knowing that I wanted that beer. And I thought I'd walk out with a case, you know, knowing not knowing that it only brewed twenty seven bottles. There's, there's barely a <laughs> there's case. There's barely yeah. Now this is a limited beer as well. That I've heard from a lot of beer fans on feedback on my Facebook on my Twitter that they can't find this. That this is impossible to find. This is a very rare beer. So even if you're not going to come to the Dogfish Head beer, we dinner, have a case. It of would this. be worth stopping in just we to taste this have, beer yes, yes. on any other. This night. is an experience. This is a really good beer. N you know, eighty percent of Dogfish beers I just absolutely love because they're just so full-bodied, aromatic. They're unique. They're different. It's not mainstream stuff, and it's really expressed. Um, they got they got muscles. Dogfish beer has muscles. Yeah, this has this has a big backbone. I think the honey. Goes into you get a little bit of that milk, that sweetness. It's really it's it's I want to put it in that sweet style milk style category for that creamy middle texture. But it's got some unique stuff. It's a big it. beer. I'd love to see how this ages. The honey comes through at the end too. It rounds it out. So I'm assuming there's enough honey in there to to, to really mellow this out, round, round the flavors out. It's a really good beer. Uh, if you're a stout drinker, dark beer drinker, you've got to try this. You've got to and try this. You can get two because this is going to change. This would be good for dessert. Mm -hmm. Really good for dessert. I think this would go phenomenal with chocolate. Um, I would see serving this with venison or a roasted dish. Um, or a braise. Braised, braised, like braised lamb like shanks. Like a, a smoked, something smoked. Yeah. Maybe. If you if you like burgers, have it with a burger. Yeah. You know, whatever you like, have it. But we're just saying some suggestions. Um, something smoked. Something smoked. I, I, I think I it would. I have to try. I have to try. I think something smoked. While this beer isn't smoked, it doesn't have smoky characteristics. It has the base for a smoked beer. I think that'll work really well. That's an incredible, you know, suggestion. And I think that that when you braise something, you get maybe like that caramelized. If you roast the veggies, coffee. when you braise, when you braise like beef, you want to like caramelize the onions, um, uh, carrots. And you want to add the celery in there too. Oh, celery's not going to caramelize. It's not a root vegetable. Root vegetables are going to caramelize. So, roasted potatoes, roasted carrots, roasted onions, or caramelized onions will really go good. So you roast all these stuff off. You put them in roasted garlic into your braising, and you pour some white wine or red wine in there, or some stock, and a lot of rosemary, a lot of thyme. And you slow cook it in the oven with a lid on it, and you sear the meat. You caramelize everything so you get extract more of the flavors. And also, when you caramelize something, it gives a little sweetness that's going to pair well yeah. with that, that honey in yeah. there. A braised lamb shank with this would be out of control. I think that meat's going to stand up to the body and you yeah. get those braised lamb shank out of control. Well. So, another phenomenal beer for dog, dog fish. fish. TV. You'll find all my videos, health, beer, wine, and uh, Kevin Burns. Formula.com. You'll find all your videos there. Yep. What's social media? Facebook, tweet us. Have any questions, email us. Yep. Come do a, a video blog with us. Come do a video blog with us.